Claim backed up by Lee Burke at Loma Linda University. Burke has spent more than 30 years studying how laughter affects what's going on in our bodies. Burke has found laughter decreases stress hormones, improves our immune system, and boosts endorphins. Those are the brain chemicals associated with the runner's high. Exercise and its good effects on health have become widely known. I mean, I think no one would disagree with that now. Is that where we're going to get with laughter? I'm thinking we may get there with the same sort of prescription for laughter of uh, maybe 30 minutes a day, three or four times a week, if not more. That sounds like a pretty good prescription. Uh, it's enjoyable. In a year-long study of heart patients, Burke asked one group to choose half an hour of comedy daily. Some chose the sitcom yeah, Friends. You know, given my lifelong search for irony, you can imagine how happy I am. <laughs> Others received the same medical care without the comedy. The group that laughed required fewer medications, such as beta blockers and nitroglycerin. Most striking, over the 12 months of the experiment, only 8% of the group that laughed suffered a second heart attack, compared with 42% of the control group. Now, if you or I had discovered a medication that did that, we'd be on our way probably to Stockholm or to Sweden. You'd be getting the Nobel Prize. Yeah. Even the anticipation of laughter produces some of the same beneficial results, offering evidence of what Burke calls the biology of hope. Finally from us this evening, medicine on the cutting edge when you send in the clowns. And there is surely no other time when a child will be in such need of laughter. To see the clowns in action is to see their value, to see their genuine scientific value. Dr. Maria New is head of pediatrics here. I remember particularly one child who had been in the hospital for over six months, and then all of a sudden one day he was seeing the clowns and he began to get better. Does this mean that laughter is a legitimate medical treatment? Might it actually be a cure? It is not alternative medicine. Uh, there's nothing alternative about having your body be part of the healing process. Professor Lee Burke of the Loma Linda School of Medicine in California has been studying laughter and medicine for 18 years. He comes to this conclusion. Laughter works as an agent on a body's stress hormones stress hormones that suppress the immune system. So then when we decrease those stress hormones, we actually allow for the immune system to actually crank itself back up. This group in Professor Burke's laboratory is watching the comedian Gallagher. And as they laugh, Dr. Burke takes a blood sample. And under the microscope, he finds something else. Laughter increases the number of natural killer cells in the immune system. Natural killer cells go after and fight virally infected cells and fight tumor cells. Professor Burke's findings have now been accepted by many in the medical community, confirming what clowns have understood throughout history. After all, the ancient Greeks built their hospitals next to amphitheaters so the sick could be entertained. When my sugar walks down the One thing we do know, laughter sing. cannot hurt. That is our report on World News Tonight. Could The Simpsons and Seinfeld help you live longer? As Jeff Michael reports, there's now some proof that laughter really is the best medicine. Doctors have never found the funny bone, but one doc has pinned down what happens to us when something strikes it. Dr. Lee Burke at Loma Linda University Medical Center divided 48 heart attack patients into two groups. One had regular uh, cardiac rehab, and the other group uh, had cardiac rehab, but they were told to watch 30 minutes at least of humor every day for a full year. They watched Laurel and Hardy, the comedian Gallagher. What about citrus? No problem! Whatever tickled their fancy. The result? In other words, there was only two reoccurrent heart attacks in the group that watched the comedy movie compared to 10 in the, the group that uh, uh, didn't watch any comedy movie. The key is what doctors call negative stress hormones. 
Okay, let's pretend for a minute this guy's a little stressed out. According to Burke, that's caused by the brain sending a signal to the pituitary gland somewhere in here. That produces a stress hormone, which in turn sends another signal to the adrenal gland somewhere down here by the kidneys. That also produces a stress hormone. Now, what Burke has proven is that when we laugh, somehow the signal between the brain and those two glands gets blocked. Lord, Dr. Burke says Lord Mel Jehovah. Brooks has given unto you these 15 delivers the right Eight. kind of humor. Ten, ten commandments. It's oh, as old as the scriptures. Pay. Dr. Burke says he's just scientifically proving the proverb, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bone. What I meant to see was that... Uh, your lip. Well, and lip, that brings us back to the funny bone. Yeah. Dr. Burke says if, for example, Eddie Murphy tickles your funny bone, then he's your prescription. But Burke warns, not all humor will do the trick. A humor that is demeaning or derogatory, uh, that makes fun of other people, it doesn't elicit the type of biology in the body that we experience with a merry heart. The doctor plans to publish his study early next year, one of the few times when he will not encourage his colleagues to laugh.